Being a pirate takes courage, wit, and a good ship. And Skull and Bones has several different ships to choose from to fit your personal preference and playstyle. With so many options to choose from, blueprints to find and collect, and materials to craft each ship, it can be a monumental and tedious task to know where to even begin. In this guide, we will discuss where to find each and every ship blueprint in Skull and Bones and what each ship has to offer as you plunder and pillage. There are a total of 10 ships available currently within Skull and Bones, and as you begin, you are only given a DAO to learn the ropes. This is a base level 1 ship that has no weapon slots and no option to equip furniture. This first ship is given to you free of charge during the tutorial, but can still be useful later on. When sailing around at lower levels, even when you have a better and larger ship, there are some small passageways with materials that only the smallest of ships can get into. This is when the DAO shines its brightest, as you can swap ships at any time to embark on a quest to find ore, trees, or even some fruit. The next ship in the bunch is the Rammer, which is under the Badar class and is also a base level 1 ship. This level can be changed by adding weapons, furniture, or armor to it, which will also give you a much-needed boost for defense and offense. The blueprint for this ship is extremely easy to obtain, as it comes from the shipwright in St. Anne for 660 silver coins. Once you have gotten the blueprint, you will be able to task the shipwright with crafting the ship for you, for a fee of course, and then begin using it on the high seas. This is a DPS ship that is catered more towards those who are not afraid of smashing into oncoming enemies at ramming speeds, as the Lancer perk for this ship offers 25% increased damage from ramming and reduces the slowing effect on torn sails by 50%. This tanky ship is perfect for anyone who loves living on the front lines and taking in all damage to save party members from the briny deep. The Defender is in the Hulk class, and it is capable of withstanding massive amounts of damage in order to mitigate as much as possible. Bracing is already a huge part of survival in Skull and Bones, as it can become the difference between getting blasted to pieces and being able to take on some crazy cannonballs without taking any damage whatsoever. The Defender is one of the best ships for bracing and negating incoming fire, and the Ironclad perk reduces Brace Strength Depletion by 20% when you get struck by the opposition. With a base level of 2 and a hull health starting at a whopping 30,000, this ship is absolutely perfect for anyone who wants to be able to sustain a boatload of incoming attacks without having to use a repair kit on cooldown. Now, if you like healing any oncoming damage without needing a repair kit, and while taking on groups of angry pirate rogues at once, the Sentinel is the ship for you, with a base level of 2 and a perk that is easily one of the best in the game, as it restores severe damage by 0.5% and hull health by 0.5% per second, in or out of combat, this small ship packs a mighty punch. Equipping furniture that helps boost damage and healing from specific weapons can be the best build for this one, as it will allow you to heal not only yourself, but others as well. The Sentinel really can be a jack-of-all-trades when equipped with the proper armor, furniture, and weapons, so be sure to pay close attention to what you choose to equip it with. This blueprint can be found in Lenitra, which is an outpost to the northeast of St. Anne, and will cost a pretty penny of 1,080 silver coins. You will also need to be rank Rover 1 in Infamy rank in order to acquire this blueprint. The Barge Class Firebrand starts with a base level of 3 and would be considered a DPS type ship, as it's made for those who use fire weapons aboard their vessel. The perk Wildfire will allow you to apply the Ablaze effect to nearby ships, up to 125 meters of the initial one hit with the effect, and increase the damage of Ablaze by 20%. Burning damage will increase the Ablaze charge speed by 150% meaning you will want to use fire-enhanced weaponry like the Fire Bombard in order to continuously throw out massive amounts of fire damage for those who oppose you. The Firebrand Blueprint can be found within the Cobb Mangrove Outpost in the coast of Africa to the west of St. Anne and will cost you 4,950 silver coins to purchase. Keep in mind, you will need to reach Infamy Rank Buccaneer before you will be able to purchase this blueprint. Now, this blaster ship is made for DPS and those who literally want to blast their enemies into oblivion, as the perk makes explosive hits have a 50% chance to trigger an explosion that will deal 1500 damage to anyone within a 150 meter radius. It also does increase damage to structures and increases any explosive damage done by 15%. This is made to plunder the outposts and small settlements located around the map, as they will all have guard towers that will attempt to sink you during your voyage as you plunder them for all they're worth. With a base level of three, 
you can snag this blueprint from the sunken gold mine in the coast of Africa, which is also to the northwest of St. Anne, and you must be at least buccaneer rank in infamy to purchase it for 4,950 silver. The Bombardier is easily one of the best ships for not only carrying around massive amounts of loot and cargo, but doing insane damage to enemies with the right equipment setup. This DPS-type ship has the detonate perk, which means that explosive hits have a 70% chance to trigger an explosion that does 1,000 damage to enemies within a 125-meter radius. This effect can be increased by 100% if the enemy is under the ablaze effect from fire damage. And similarly to the sloop, it has increased damage to structures and weapon damage radius. This is one of the harder ships to acquire as the blueprint is only available in Talak Pinjara, and it's only available from the shipwright. And it takes a massive amount of materials to craft. The materials are pretty hard to get if you are under level, and if you are doing things solo, so you will need to defeat enemy ships to get the shellac and saltpeter in mass quantities. The amount of time it takes to sail and purchase this blueprint is absolutely worth it though, as it has a base level of 5 and some pretty powerful perks. The blueprint runs for 5,280 silver, and you must at least be a brigand in the infamy rank in order to grab it for yourself. Next up, we have the Vanguard, also known as the Snow, and it's another tank-type ship that is great at mitigating oncoming attacks. Excelling in defense and brace recovery, this is yet another ship that is perfect for anyone who wants to be directly front and center during the heat of battle. The Tenacity perk recovers 4% of brace strength per second while bracing, meaning you can withstand damage longer, and it increases brace strength by 50% and brace strength recovery by 150% for just 10,560 silver and the rank of Corsair. This massive damage shield can be yours for the taking by heading to the Kamoi Estate in the East Indies to the northwest of Talak Penjara. One of the best ships for doing straight damage to anyone who attempts to stand in your way is the Hullbreaker, which has the bullhorn trait, which is honestly one of the most fun thus far. Ramming into other boats is sickly satisfying, and with this ship you will do 45 increased damage from slamming into those who have the loot you want as your own. Not only that, but the duration of the torn sails effect is reduced by 80% when the ship is in use, meaning less hoping for the best while you're stuck in one place and more smashing into everyone and everything along your path. While absolutely mashing the opposition, you will also add the flooded effect to anyone you decide to ram into with the Hullbreaker, which slows them down and keeps them within your sights. This ship will cost 15,840 silver to get the blueprint which is at the ruined lighthouse in the East Indies to the south of Talak Penjara, and you must be the rank of Cutthroat to use this battering ram of a ship. And lastly, we have what could be the hardest ship to get, as it is only purchasable with Pieces of Eight. These Pieces of Eight are only acquired through completing tasks for the helm by reaching endgame and taking over outposts. For a massive amount of 5,000 Pieces of Eight, this ship can be purchased from the Black Market in Talak Panjara or St. Anne, but it's mostly worth its weight in gold. The Scorched Perk deals 5,000 fire damage to anyone affected with the Ablaze effect, and Ablaze will then be applied to any ships within a 150 meter radius. It also increases Ablaze damage by 50%, which is perfect for anyone who favors the Sea Fire and placing enemies in direct contact of a blazing inferno with fire weapons. Even though this is one of the hardest ships to get your hands on, it is perfect for aggressive DPS who want to scorch their enemies in Hellfire while they voyage around the Seven Seas in search of loot and treasure. That's going to do it for this guide on all current ships in Skull and Bones. For more, head on over to our growing wiki pages, and as always, for all things gaming, stick with IGN. <laughs>